Okay, if you follow along with me, at the top of the page, we're going to use similar triangles to, to prove a proportion. So if you look at the first example, that's part B in the proof. And then we're also going to prove cross products are equal, okay? And that's part C in the first proof. And then if you look at the second proof, that's just our statement. So I, if you look at question one, I already went through and proved the triangle similar, but I want to highlight what I did to prove the two triangles similar. So it said that angle ACB and triangle ABC is a right angle. So that's this angle right here. So if you take and trace or shade. So in this triangle, here's the right angle that's given. And it said that CD is perpendicular to AB. And if CD is perpendicular, that forms two right angles. So I said the two triangles um, angle B, because I'm looking down here at the statement that I need to prove. So those two triangles, ABC is the larger one, and then the one on the right, CBD. So if I want to prove those two triangles similar, always look to use reflexive. They overlap at angle B. They have angle B in common, so that's right here. Okay, so that's step number two. CDB is a right angle, that's this angle right here, because perpendicular lines intersect to form right angles, and then CDB is congruent to ACB, this was a given, and all right angles are congruent. So by angle-angle, they're similar. Questions on how we proved them to be similar? Okay, so that means part A is done. That was done for you. Now I need to pr uh, prove the proportion in two similar triangles, and I wouldn't necessarily look at the triangles to see what sides are proportional or what sides correspond. You can see right in your similarity statement. So if I have AB, if you look above, AB corresponds to CB, which is right here. The next segment, BC, well, BC corresponds to BD, which is that segment there. Okay, so look at the similarity statement to identify those sides that are corresponding. So since I just proved the triangles similar, I know the ratio of AB to BC is going to be equal to BC to BD because corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. So in part C, okay, I just proved the proportion to be true. Corresponding sides are in the same ratio or proportional. Now I have to prove that BC squared, which means BC times BC, is equal to AB times BD. That's true because in a proportion, how many of you actually remember this from middle school? The product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. So 7... BC squared, which means BC times BC, is equal to AB times BD, because in a proportion, the product of the means equals the product of the extremes. So number two, it's given that DE is parallel to AB and EF is parallel to AC. And we need to prove that DG, so if you take and highlight that DG times GF uh, is equal to EG times GC. In highlighting those segments in the cross product, you can then connect the vertices of those two sides to see the triangles. And from there, I write the proportion that goes with this cross product. So based on that cross product, all you need is to start DG. You can put it in the numerator or denominator. I just, when I solve my proportion, I usually go this way. 
So I set it up DG times GF is equal to EG times GC. It really doesn't matter if you start in the numerator as long as you go diagonally for the cross product. So this is what I want to show before the cross product. And before I have the proportion, I have to show they're similar. So I'm looking for angle, angle. So given that DE, so this line is parallel to AB, and then given that EF is parallel to AC, who can tell me step number two, I need a pair of congruent angles. Yeah, Maddie? So the vertical angles, so one and two. Angle one is congruent to angle two because all vertical angles are congruent. Good. I'm going to highlight my triangles in pink again. Now I need a pair of angles congruent formed by the parallel lines. If you look at the yellow ones, we have two transversals. We had a transversal DE and transversal CF. So either transversal is going to give us what pair of congruent angles? Corresponding, alternate interior, alternate exterior. Those are only three pair. Alternate interior. So let's just do... Um, here, we'll do 3 and 4. So number 3, angle 3 is congruent to angle 4 because if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent. Now the triangles are similar by angle angle. So see if you can write your similarity statement. It's always written in terms of those angles that are congruent. So number four, if I say triangle GEF, that would be similar to triangle GEF would be I went from 2 to 4 to F, so this would be on the other one, G, D, C, good. Now you can finish with, this is step number 5, and this is going to be step number 6. We have similar triangles, so the sides are proportional, those corresponding sides, and then we have our cross product. So number 5 is E, G over DG, that ratio is equal to GF to GC. That's because corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. And then 6 is going to be our cross product in a proportion the product of the means equals the product of the extremes. And this is the last two-column proof type for the year. So we have congruency and similarity. So now we just need to practice, okay? If we turn in the back, okay, we're going to look at similarities in right triangles. You have a right triangle. The larger right triangle, if you have highlighters, it'll be good to use them here. We have the largest triangle, so ACB right angle at C, we're going to draw them separately. So let's draw them separately as we highlight them in the picture. Each triangle has 
two legs in a hypotenuse. And unless it's isosceles, one leg is longer than the other, correct? So this triangle here has the right angle at C. The longer leg is AC or CB? CB is longer and then CA. Okay, so I'm going to say triangle BCA is similar to. Now within that triangle, we have two more right triangles because we're looking at, if I remove, I'll get rid of that toolbar, the altitude drawn. And the altitude is drawn perpendicular. So when I draw the altitude, I have two right angles. And this triangle, which one's bigger, CAD or CBD? CBD. So with another color, Here's the middle size triangle. So right angle is at D, and which is the longer leg, BD or CD? BD. This is the longer leg, the altitude's the shorter. So it's BDC. And then in the smaller one, we'll do an orange. Right angle is at D. And then this similarity statement, since I went BCA, would be BDC, similar to triangle. Which is longer, CD or AD? CD, AD. So I wrote it, okay, and I drew my triangles separately so that I had a longer leg, shorter leg. Longer leg, shorter leg. Longer leg, shorter leg. And of course, your hypotenuse. Make sense so far? You don't have to draw them separately, but if you really struggle with seeing these um, parts of the right triangle, longer leg, shorter leg, hypotenuse, you're going to want to draw them separately. But let's try with the pictures down below to keep them together in the same picture. So if I'm giving the altitude in the hypotenuse, which is the first one, we're going to do the first um, proportion and then we'll solve the question below it. So if the altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse, okay, we're going to write a proportion to solve each one of these because they're all similar triangles. Make sense? So from the proportion, the cross products gives us the equation. The first one's easiest to remember, okay, if you look at the triangles, you first need to identify those triangles in which you're given two sides. You can't write a proportion unless you have two sides of the triangle. Are you given two sides of the larger triangle? You're given two sides of that big triangle? You're only given the hypotenuse, right? So I'm not going to highlight that one. I'm given the long leg to short leg of the green. So in the orange, that would be equal to what over what for long leg to short leg, because that's how I wrote the left side. Long to short, H is not longer. In this case, the Y is longer. So I did long to short equals long to short. The cross product would be H times H, or H squared equals X times Y. For in this case, you're better off memorizing that the altitude squared, and it's easy to just say call this segment one and segment two of the hypotenuse, equals segment one times segment two. That's easy to memorize. So in this case below, it would be six squared equals x times nine. If not, you can set up the proportion. The proportion would be long leg to short leg. So long is six to x equals long nine to six. Either way, 6 times 6 is 36, 9 times x is 9x. You get the same thing, right? So it doesn't matter how you do it. So divide by 9 and x is 4. See if you can write the proportion in the middle column while some are still copying down the notes. So given the short leg in hypotenuse is at the top. So in the big triangle in pink, I'm given the short leg A to hypotenuse C. 
So I have to be given the short leg and hypotenuse in another, and then I do is it's in the smallest one. So what would that be equal to? On the left, I wrote, again, short leg to hypotenuse. So what would be here according to this? Short leg to hypotenuse. So then a times a, a squared equals c times x. You don't have to memorize these, okay? Because you could do what I just did in the example down below. Short leg to hypotenuse, so a over 13 equals what to what? If you look at this triangle here, you're only given a leg. You're not given the short leg and hypotenuse. So you can't use that triangle. But with the triangle on the left, short leg, hypotenuse, what's going to go? What's the ratio? So A to 13 equals 4 to A. So A times A is A squared. 4 times 13 is 52. So take the square root, which gets rid of the square. And A is equal to positive or negative, rejecting the negative because we can't have a negative length. And how do we simplify 52? Two radical 13 is right. But I'm going to break it down so people can see your first factor. This actually happened to be the largest per square factor of 52. So A is equal to 2 radical 13. The last type of proportion you can have is if you're given within the picture a long leg and hypotenuse. So in the big triangle, your long leg is B to hypotenuse C. The long leg to hypotenuse in the other triangle is with this triangle on the right side this time. The right angle's here with the hypotenuse being B. So long leg to hypotenuse here would be Y over B. So cross product would be b squared equals c times y. So down here, do we have any hypotenuse marked? We have, we have to find bc. So that's x, and that's the hypotenuse of this triangle. So long leg to hypotenuse. But where's the other hypotenuse in the picture to do the ratio long leg to hypotenuse and set them equal to? Maddie? 8 plus 2. So a plus 2 is 10, and that's in the bigger triangle. So long leg to hypotenuse here would be x to 10. x times x is x squared. 8 times 10 is 80. And what does the square root of 80 simplify to? She used, if it's, the final answer is 4 radical 5, 4 was the square root of 16. So this is really 16. Break it down to the factor, 16 times 5. And then 4 radical 5 is the answer. So BC equals 4 radical 5. So on the back side, I just wanted to show you that, yes, you can do it this way. But you also have something else in your toolbox that you can use if you struggle in doing it this way. And that's using trig. Okay? We're only going to look at the first one together because I want to give you some time to practice. But I want you to look at the other two before next class to see can I use trig on example four and five as well. You can use it on the first one. So can anyone suggest how might we use trig here? to find x. So in number three, if you want to find x, you can start with the two sides of a right triangle that you know. If this is 90, this is 90, and in this triangle here on the right, you can find this angle, we'll call it y, by using sine, cosine, or tangent. Tangent, because you have, op we don't have the hypotenuse. So the tangent of y equals 6 over 9. You can reduce it, but you don't have to. How do you find the angle given the ratio on the calculator? The inverse tan. So the inverse tan of 6 over 9 gives us 
33. Now, if you're rounding ahead of time, you should really take it out four decimal places. So we'll say is approximately 33.6901. So if y is 33.6901, that allows us to find this angle here because in this larger right triangle, those two angles are complementary. Um, subtracting, so let's call this Z. Z equals 90 minus 33.6901. So subtract the 90 and you get 56 point three zero nine nine now I can use that angle Z because given this angle I have opposite and adjacent again so the tangent would move it up of 56.3099 equals 6 over X when you solve for X put this over 1 you have 6 equals X times the tangent of 56.3099. So to solve on your calculator, divide by that tangent, and x is equal to 6 divided by the tangent of 56.3099. And what do you get for an approximation? So tangent of 56.3099, and then I'm going to take 6, divide by that answer, and we get approximately four, which is what we got on the other side when we solved it using a proportion. Okay, now with trig, with trig you're always going to get an approximation. That's why when it says round to the nearest tenth, that sometimes is a hint that you're probably going to use trig rather than, or Pythagorean theorem, okay, that it's not a triple. Ultimately, the proportion shorter, but there are ways to get around doing that question if you struggle in setting up the proportion.